We expect things to be very busy on Capitol Hill this week as Congress prepares for the August recess. The House reconvenes today and will consider uh, one bill of particular interest to credit unions. We are supportive of this bill and we expect it will be considered um, this week. And this is H.R. 1408, the Mortgage Servicing Asset Capital Requirements Act. CUNA strongly supports this act as it represents a small step in the right direction toward removing barriers that keep credit unions from more fully serving their members. Uh, in addition, we expect um, some hearings on Capitol Hill, the House Financial Services Oversight and Investigation Subcommittee hearing on federal oversight and lack of transparency and accountability will take place this week. The Senate Banking, Housing and Urban Affairs Committee will have a full hearing on the CFPB semi-annual report to Congress where CFPB Director Richard Cordray will be testifying. In addition, the House Financial Services Committee will be holding a full committee hearing on monetary policy and the state of the economy uh, with Fed Chairman Janet Yellen testifying. Uh, Fed Chairman Janet Yellen will also be testifying before the Senate Banking Committee on Thursday in the, discussing the semi-annual monetary report to Congress. For more information about what's going on on Capitol Hill this week, please visit CUNA's Removing Barriers blog, which we update regularly. This week, we expect Director Cordray to mention several efforts that the CFPB is engaging in. He is going to be testifying on the Hill this week um, as part of the uh, semi-annual review of the CFPB. We expect he'll be mentioning some recent activities by the CFPB relating to uh, TILA RESPA implementation, and final, finalizing QM mortgage rules with regard to small creditors and the definition of rural, and also HUMDA requirements that we expect will be final in the next month or so. He'll likely also mention efforts on other types of loans and products and services, such as prepaid cards, debt collection, payday, and small dollar loans, and also efforts that the CFPB is engaging in on overdraft protection. While it's impressive for an agency to take on all of these rulemakings within a short window of time, it's also difficult to have thoughtful and targeted and effective rulemaking when rules are written and implemented very quickly. So as always, CUNA is strongly urging the Director Cordray and the CFPB to engage in targeted and thoughtful rulemaking that exempts credit unions from additional burdensome regulatory requirements. The CFPB has the authority to include such exemptions and it should recognize that credit unions are member-owned institutions where consumer protection is part of their DNA, and therefore there is no need for the CFPB to impose additional requirements that can make it more difficult for credit unions to serve their members. Uh, so CUNA commented on the NCUA's proposed share insurance rule, and we you know, provided some extensive comments to the NCUA on this rule. Uh, this week, the comment period ended on the proposed rulemaking regarding share insurance, and what this was essentially in regards to was uh, H.R. 3468, the Credit Union Share Insurance Fund Parity Act. And so the NCUA's proposed rule makes the necessary changes um, as required by this act. In CUNA's comment letter, we urge the NCUA to be innovative in their final rule uh, and allow credit unions to be competitive in this ever-changing marketplace where products and services are developed faster than the laws can oftentimes keep up with. Um, in particular, we suggest that the final rule allows NCUA broad authority to define membership account insurance and that the final rule should provide credit unions with parity to FDIC insured accounts as well as provide coverage to prepaid and payroll card accounts. Uh, this would be a more forward-thinking policy that's best for credit unions and their members. Last week was the deadline for comments to the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau uh, regarding its proposal to delay TILA RESPA compliance deadline uh, from October from August 1st of this year to October 3rd of this year. And CUNA provided um, some comments to the CFPB on this proposed deadline extension. We sent a letter to the CFPB and we were thankful for the extension to October 3rd and we thanked them for this, but we also commented that we believe the additional two month period should be extended to January 1st of 2016 and that this would be a more appropriate period given the magnitude of the changes and the costs associated with implementation. We also um, strongly encourage the CFPB to implement a safe harbor for legal liability and enforcement until the end of the year. Furthermore, we ask that the CFPB confirm in its uh, final rule that creditors that make five or fewer mortgages per year as, as outlined in the uh, rule's supplementary information and the September 2014 Small Entity Compliance Guide, that these, that these financial institutions are exempt from the TILA RESPA rule. 
There currently exists an inconsistency between the text of Regulation Z and the supplementary information and small entity compliance guide. Because of this inconsistency, we're asking that the CFPB clear that up and, be, and clarify that institutions that provide five or fewer mortgages per calendar year are exempt from the new TILA RESPA requirements. Overall, we are always encouraging the CFPB to provide the clearest policy and guidance for credit unions so that they can effectively serve their members. In the end, effective consumer service is consumer protection, and this is a message that we're frequently reiterating and repeating to the CFPB.